everyone. I'm going to call this meeting of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board to order for Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair. The other members on my right are Kevin O'Connell, Michael Lazorchak, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Rob Goodwin. All right. The first order of business is the approval of the agenda. Uh, does anyone have any changes to the agenda? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make the uh, uh, motion to accept the agenda as presented. Okay, motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kate. All those in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. And <coughs> we have an agenda. No comments from the chair this evening. Uh, we have the minutes of August 19th, and those in attendance are myself, Kevin, Kate, and Rob and Michael. So we are all eligible. Does anyone have any corrections or changes to make? Uh, staff would make a correction and the, yes. the date needs to be revised. From the 20th to the 19th. From the 20th of 2018 to the 19th of 2019. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Completely different, different year. With that correction, Anyone have any other corrections or a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor of the minutes who are eligible to vote, please raise your right hand. The minutes are approved. Excellent. So the first item of business is 9 Ewing Street. Um, and share if I might have a moment. Uh, yes. We have some updated comments from the Department of Public Works following some site visits this morning that I would like to pass around. And these actually apply to both of the applications okay. coming before us today. Um, and these have been circulated to applicants. But if anybody needs a copy, I do have them. Would you like one? Okay. Should I submit this now? Uh, yeah, I would submit that now. Dan, I'm yes. thinking uh, we do want to hear a summary from Meredith. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes I sense. I think that would be very helpful. I'll just have the applicant and cruises themselves swear them in yeah. and as well. I don't know. Are you here to comment on this application or are you here for the next? Mm -hmm. This for the next. Oh, for the next application. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's good. No, I need that. Not a problem. I usually keep one, but I forgot to. Will, what I'm going to have you do is introduce yourself. I'll swear you in, and then Meredith is going to give an overview <clears throat> and some background about the application. Sure. And then we'll turn it over to you. Sounds so good. You'll state your name for the record. I am Will Shabaum with Steeplechase Design and Build. Okay. And you're here on behalf of the applicant? Yep. On behalf of uh, the nine new entry owners. Okay. Peter and Andrea. Peter and Andrea, yep. So if you raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Excellent. Meredith, why don't you give us an overview as to this project and maybe some of the background details? Um, so the only reason this application is here before the board is that it is an addition that impacts some 30% or greater slopes. Um, it is a single addition on a single family home. Um, so normally this would just be an administrative approval. Um, however, you have the steep slopes at issue. Um, the additional Department of Public Works comments that I handed out uh, at the beginning um, with regard to 9 Ewing, so that's the first paragraph in the email. Um, Department of Public Works had had some questions about how stormwater was going to flow off of the site, given that 
Um, there's a fairly steep drop off to the west of the driveway down to the next um, property. And so there was a, a site visit this morning. Um, Zach Blodgett and myself and Don Marsh and, and Will were all on the site in discussions about possibilities about how to potentially regrade or run the stormwater, given that the um, proposed addition is going to create some flows to the east and some to the west in front of the house as well as some to the west behind the house. Um, and at, per the updated comments from Zach Blodgett, um, this, the Department of Public Works would prefer um, to add a small yard drain in connection to the storm system running along the edge of the road, something preferably that's going to be to the west of the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not, not a major like catch basin or anything like that, but a small like yard drain that goes directs connectly connects directly into the stormwater system. Um, however, there's some questions about exactly what that this flow impact is going to be. So the Department of Public Works is willing to wait and see what the actual impact is going to be of this and do a visit in April or May when um, you have the most flows between runoff and the fact that you don't have a lot of foliage to take up that water at that point. Um, and then, you know, decide exactly what to do at that point. Uh, you know, how that's, that's a little hairy. Okay. Um, but that's, I just wanted to throw in that that's one of their thoughts. Everything, you know, most everything that I, have reviewed in here seems to be compliant with the steep slopes requirements you know there's some question about exactly why some area um, to the far south of the parcel is getting regraded um, and what purpose that has with the rest of, of the work um, right. <clears throat> but there aren't a lot of red flags it was really stormwater um, and some regrading um, you know, the Department of Public Works had some questions about, you know, exactly what fill, fill quantities were going to be used for some fill areas on the site. Well, where, where is Public Works envisioning this yard drain and where, what would it tie, would it tie into a, the yep. storm sewer? The storm system, the storm water line runs straight down Ewing Street. Right, right in front of the of the parcel, okay. so you can see where there's a blue line that says, with a note that says "regrade as needed to direct runoff to edge of drive, then mm -hmm. to city catch basin and street, just right. to the west of the driveway." So instead of having that, the Department of Public, Work, Public Works doesn't want additional stormwater flows going onto the street on that hill and potentially freezing and creating ice. Right. So instead of having it run down the driveway and in, into the road, they would rather direct it you know, partway down the driveway and then off into, there's a garden here on the edge, into that garden and put in a drain there that then connects directly into the stormwater system under the road. Almost like the rain garden over at yeah. UES where the outlet would tie into the, directly into the storm. Exactly. Right, so and the, the water gets to the ground by going in a pipe underground rather than along the road till it gets to the storm drain. Yeah. Which, given the topography in this area and a, and a lot of the, a lot of the city, the way that these drains are behaving lately, makes sense. Yeah. So that's their preference. They are willing to wait and see what happens, but this is something where the board, you know, has discretion as to what, how they want to time things. Well, it, no, go ahead. To a degree, I, I want to understand what the wait and see option means. I think what you. I've just read this very quickly, having just received it, but um, the the hook for installing that underwater drain, mm. if needed, is the certificate of occupancy for the new. That would be a way to tie a hook, and yes, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be. The, it would be the certificate of compliance. 
it would be adding a cause certificate of occupancy is building permit. But yeah, it would be adding a certificate of compliance. A certificate of occupancy is a building permit? Certificate of occupancy is in, in, in Montpelier is what's required after a building permit. For a zoning, it's certificate of compliance. But do we typically issue certificates of compliance? Uh, not anymore. If the board wants to do a certificate of compliance, they can add it as a condition. Are there other conditions or hooks that would lead to not sort of, I forget what it, what is it called usually like conditions subsequent or, or whatever that's really the best hook okay. but that does mean that they cannot use or occupy the addition mm -hmm. until they get the certificate of compliance right that makes sense okay and I, I don't mean to point us in yep. that direction necessarily I'm just uh, as we start to lay out the range of issues and, mm -hmm. and where they lead mm -hmm. us I'm, yeah I'm, if you were trying I'm, to do I'm a thinking it through not recommending anything mm -hmm. at this moment I'm still learning well, no, we do need to hear from the applicant about yes. some of this. <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, let's, since we seem to be focusing on this, I understand this is not the central part of the uh, application, but have you had an opportunity, Will, to review the Public Works comments? I have, and I was, I was present at the meeting this morning with Zach and Don and, mm -hmm. you know, going over some of the options and, and whatnot. And, um, yeah, I understand the, the concern for, you know, mitigating, you know, waterfalls down the street. Um, but, you know, within a reasonable common sense approach that's not going to require the homeowners to dig up the street. And at first the conversation was catch basins and things like that in the road. And then we sort of steered it into a more modest proposal in the next to the road. So, um, yeah, I'm aware of. So situation. If I understand, they want um, small yard drain and connection to be made to the storm system running along the edge of the road. That's still tying directly into the storm system. Yeah, it would be tying in. You'd you know, dig in and then go over sideways right. somehow. I'm not exactly sure the technical process to do that. Uh, I think a qualified excavation contractor would. Right. Um, but just, I mean, the proposal is, at least on the table, what DPW is saying is we're willing to, they're willing to take a sort of wait and see approach. Which I think makes sense. I mean, it's a, it's a heavily vegetated site. I mean, the front yard is, for the most part, most people would say it's flat. You know, you look at the slope map or whatever, and it's, there is slope to it, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, water is going to follow that. You know, and I think the wait and approach, the wait and see approach, does make sense. Um, you know, because it's not. Let's see, it's not quite shown on um, Don's map here, but there is, you know, a significant swale, you know, stone line swale that sort of encircles the driveway, which is where the majority of the water is going to originate and kind of go through. And then this uh, vegetated area between the driveway and Ewing Street is kind of like would be the sort of last area where the majority of it would sort of come out, at least the majority of the water. And so I think that's, you know, Don's concern was like, if it even is an increase in flows, then we should do something about it. But it's hard to say if it's right. going to be that dramatic of an increase. Well, the, the thing I would struggle with is, is just how, what is the trigger for this? Is this something where the DPW, if they determine that this is unsatisfactory to them. I mean, you know, we don't have a baseline measurement as to what the flows are now. Yeah. Um, and we're not going to, because you're going to presumably break ground before next spring. That would be the plan, and before snow falls. Um, so if that's the case, then, you know, next spring we're really dealing with this new universe, and the mm -hmm. question is, what does that new universe look like? And yeah. then in which case DPW is really looking at this as, well, is this causing puddling and, and ice icing yeah. as it is now, regardless of whether it did before? Mm -hmm. Because, I'm, I mean, unless there's testimony that shows this is a particularly troublesome area. Yeah, I'm not aware that it is. Um, you know, it might simply be some discretion left to DPW, and the question is, is the applicant comfortable with, with that, um, where DPW would make that mm -hmm. essentially unilateral determination? Because 
while we have some flexibility on these conditions subsequent, um, we're, we're going to, we would, if we put one in like this, it would be phrased so that it would be a fairly simple, straightforward tie-in. And, and if it's the certificate of compliance, then that's a huge hammer. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if there's a dispute about whether or not DPW should be doing it, it's going to tie up whether the the applicants can live in their new addition or not. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think we, I just want, obviously, you and us to go in open-eyed about that. Yeah. Um, and whether that makes the most sense. Um, I mean, the other, you know, it sounds like it could be anything from a simple yard yard drain to almost like a rain garden type situation. Yeah. Well, and they have the option. It's a single family home. They can put a rain garden in there anytime they want. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if they see something happening before, say, Zach or Kurt gets out there and they're like, oh, you know, we'll just dig a hole, put some rocks and some plants, and then, you know, that stops the problem, mm -hmm. then, you know, they just a concern I would have this approach that DPW is recommending is that once the addition is built Kevin can you pull your microphone once the position is uh, the addition is built it, I would expect it would be highly unlikely that they're going to say no there's no way this doesn't isn't going to work for us um, and the other issue would be we have an exceptionally wet spring this year that mm -hmm. would just be one sample period versus what the norm would be would be over several yeah. seasons. Yeah. Um, I'm I mean, just wondering if there's another way to accomplish the same goal without having to use the occupancy. Yeah, the I mean, I happened to actually be there the day of, like, the, the heaviest rainstorms that we got this summer. And, you know, it was definitely wet and rainy, but nothing struck me as out of the ordinary. Right. But, I mean, the, there's a difference between that and, you know, the the spring and early spring and late winter. Yeah, this, this where, was sometime in Where July. melt and, you know, the lack of vegetation. I mean, right now the ground's going to suck up anything yeah. that falls down as opposed to, you know, when it's frozen and it cheats off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's really when it's more dangerous mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways. You know, you create this sort of ice lake. Yeah. That, I mean, on a, especially given Ewing Street's, yeah. you know, on a slope here. So forgive me, I have an infrastructure 101 kind of question. Um, it would be, in an ideal world, it would be very nice if the stormwater coming up off of the new roofs could be captured by gutters mm -hmm. and put through the basement away. But the only exit from the basement would be through the sewer, right? As opposed to the storm drain. And we want it in the storm drain, not Well, the yeah. Sewer. I mean, I think typically we, we, we tie gutters into perimeter footing drains, which then... Perimeter what drains? Perimeter drains. Mm -hmm. Footing drains around the foundation. Footing so they don't go into the sewer, and they, but that's, they usually just daylight oh, into, say, a swale or yeah. catch okay. basin or some yeah. sort okay. of Okay, so there's area. nothing in the house that already connects to the storm drain. Houses <clears throat> connect to sewers. Right. Okay. The, yeah. There's that. And, and ultimately, I mean... The preferred is to have it infiltrate in the ground right. yeah. and treat that way and spread out. But yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so you, you want to keep the water on the property, let it infiltrate as yeah, much as possible. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. Sink it, spread it. Slow it. Slow it. Slow it, slow it, slow it, it, it sink it, spread it. it. Slow it, spread it, sink it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think Kevin is articulating some of the concerns that are are here is that kind of giving DPW an open ticket and the, the question that I I would have is you know how do we how do we tie this to I mean we need to make sure if we put this on here that's a meaningful condition such that we don't end up with a half baked you know half finished project you know you're you as a responsible builder are, you know, terminated and you never finish your job. And well, yeah, and or that we finish the project in February and they just, like, you know, can't get into it yet. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I mean from, from a practical standpoint, I don't know how many banks would be willing to loan for an addition if there's a potential that 
they could never be used. I'm uh, not sure we can consider that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the solution from my understanding with talking with Zach and Don this morning is that, you know, if they did say, like, hey, we need to do this, that it would be a day or less of work with an excavator and a, and a mini. So it's not asking the clients, for instance, to be digging up the street and this okay. and that, you know, so it'd be a fairly small fix, mm -hmm. you know, and I think... If it's looked at as, as just a tweak, I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe if, it, if it's then my concerns. Well, yeah, it would be the kind of, you know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of a standard process, you know, as a builder is, you know, there's times where we get things put back together and then winter comes and then there's still some fine tuning, right. especially with sites, you know, come springtime. And if this is one of them, you know, we'll just be like, well, we have to do this. You know, of course, they don't want to be creating a situation as residents and neighbors that is impacting the street or their downhill neighbor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, we can we, we, we can come back to that. Um, I think in in part that largely answers that question. That's just really for us as a board. We have to figure out what the right mechanism is but will I'm understanding that you're 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 at least comfortable with the proposition that we make this a future condition to completion of the permit which is that it would be yeah. a, it would be a condition of the of the permit that mm -hmm. you know would would be triggered by DPW signing off yeah. one way or the other yep. understanding that they may say we want you to do this project mm -hmm. but your understanding with them is that this is a relatively quick and easy fix yeah it's a tweak as opposed mm -hmm. to a redesign i mean there's certain elements of the project already as far as like final finishes that okay. the homeowners are like well we'll do that and i was like okay if you want to do some built-in closet pantry stuff fine obviously but you know they're not going to have them excavating <laughs> storm catchments you know so that would right. be on us um, so let's talk about the, the southern part of the property. There is regrading going on, just so I understand, in the sort of lower right-hand corner. Yeah, they basically, so that's kind of like the top edge of a sort of knoll, and they, it's pretty much, for the most part, existing overgrown edge of forest scrub, you know, not very usable space. And uh, they basically just kind of want to flatten it a little bit just to make it a little bit more of a usable backyard. Because, I mean, essentially the current house just kind of is tucked into the hill and there's an existing deck which we're tearing away. Right. So just to make it a little bit more user-friendly. Okay. And then that, that fill is going to be moved over to the western part of the property? Yeah, something along those lines. That would be the plan rather than trucking it off-site, you know, use what we can okay. if possible. And so then, oh, sorry, so that's unrelated to the addition this, that's being requested. Yeah, it's unrelated, but I mean, it's obviously, I think it triggers some of the slope. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Okay. And just so a that question. that might not happen. Also, just as far as you know, they want to get the permit for it, and then if, if money allows. Just for clarification purposes. Um, the square footage marks on the um, site EPSC plan that we received today. The one that Don? Yeah, from Don. The 790 square feet, 616 square feet, yeah. and 338 square feet. That's the area, but we don't actually have, like, the cubic I yards. I think he calculated of of 120 cubic yards. 120 cubic yards? Yeah. Okay. I was removed. looking for his email where he said that. Um, okay, so that would be removed and then put either at that excess fill to flatten out off, area, off or site. maybe, or because you have this plastic. Yeah, we could also we could also use some of it to front. create the the the, the, the swale, you know the. We grade that area yeah. to guide the water. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You know, I think ultimately, in, in practical, I think more fill would probably be taken off site versus moved over to the western side there. Okay, so a um, couple of 
issues going through and the staff comments. Um, unless anybody had any other questions about that back regrading. So it's essentially to create a usable yard. Yeah. Backyard. Um, a little bit more private in the front yard. A little bit more of like a, a grassy lawn as opposed to what it is now, which is kind of hilly. Yeah. Forced. Mm -hmm. So on the staff comments, um, talks about the uh, the parking area, driveway, and shed that are in the setback area. Mm -hmm. And I don't see the shed. Where is the shed located? Uh, that's not on the most recent. Um, if you go to the site plan. Or it's on the post. original slope map. Yeah, AO3 oh, okay. or AO4. Yeah. Um, and this is just a, it's a technicality that the mm -hmm. board needs to decide on and that, you know, we don't have an exact build date on that. Um, but the, these are as essentially existing. We have no reason to believe that they were put in by this owner. We know they weren't put in by this owner. We actually have email in here because they weren't put in by this owner. Technically, they might not meet the definition of a nonconformity because I'm not sure that they were conforming when they were built. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what it makes the most sense to okay. find it as. Yep. So that's just a suggestion that we consider those. can, And those aren't going to be affected by no. the project Correct. at all. They're not changing the parking area nope. or... And that shed is just a like yeah, storage it's just like shed. a bikes and stuff. I mean, on the there's they did take the tree the, the tree fort down out back. Yeah, <laughs> we've had those issues. Remember the tree fort on Liberty Street? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a structure. Um, okay. Does anyone have any issues with that? Treating those as existing nonconformities that are really not affected by this project? No, that's good. Okay. Um, and then the uh, steep slope issue. Why don't you talk a little bit, Will? I'd like to hear. Um, let's get into the meat of the actual addition, how it fits into the existing steep slopes. You know, you, as you said, this house is, as it exists now, is kind of built into the hillside. Yeah. Um, and walk us through in a similar way to what you did with your last project. Yeah, so essentially we're adding a uh, two-story addition on the sort of eastern side of the existing house, which is going to serve as a uh, sort of mudroom, which will be sort of split between the two existing levels. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a uh, master bedroom sort of above that on the same floor as the main living space. And then from the mudroom, you'll step down into the... Uh, the ground floor of the existing house and uh, yeah so it's kind of you know where the de the current deck is is sort of you know the sort of it's kind of bold the, the slope is bold into the house a little bit so you know we're just kind of extending it off that eastern side <clears throat> and uh, kind of keying it into the hill so it'll be a stepped foundation and you have the engineered foundation drawings in your packets that DeWolf has gone over. And uh, Is there any proposal to change the grade? Around? A little bit, you know, necessary. I mean, if anything, it'll be flattening it out on the sort of south side. But essentially, the, the east side is essentially going to stay the same and just, you know... Built, built into the... Yeah, side. it's pretty much, you know, the, it's designed to sort of fit within the existing grade and not change it any in any dramatic way. Mm -hmm. And as you said, this is kind of, and I can sort of see in at least the current drawings, it looks like it overlaps with the existing wooden deck. Yeah, the existing wooden deck is just going away. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously, but yeah. I mean, the, the footprint of this yep. sort of, it's larger than the old wooden deck. Yeah. But it's, it's roughly in the same location. Mm -hmm. um, is there a proposal to build another deck on the back of this? Um, it's a sort of a deck or patio. Okay. I think it's, um, <coughs> yeah, proposed deck. The 
Yeah, there weren't. There's not a lot of details about the deck or patio option. It's yeah. just. I mean, you can see it on the 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 drawings we got today from Don, where it says the proposed deck patio area. Oh, okay. Um, because I think it you know, whether it's a deck oh, or yeah. whether it's a patio will kind of depend on if it's actually at grade there or lifted up slightly. Yeah, and also sort it. of and sort of budget as well. Yeah. Okay, and uh, we have a letter from Don, I believe, in the packet that talks about uh, his opinion that with the proper construction site can be developed without causing adverse impacts on public health, safety, or the environment. Um, and so your testimony, Will, is that this is essentially going to be built into that hillside. It's yeah. And uh, it looks like, and just, just to be clear, and this is what I was searching for, is so the, the patio or deck is going to be behind yeah. the house, and it's yeah. really going to be where the existing Yeah, because the current deck, deck wraps around. Right. And so the house the, the, the house addition is actually, it looks like it's going to be built a little bit t towards little, to the side and towards the front of Ewing Street. Yeah, a little more to the northeast, northeast corner. Mm -hmm. you know, and then the deck will sort of wrap down onto the southeast corner. Um, and then uh, the rain calculations as to what kind of runoff this is going to create with this roof. I mean, obviously, the, the shed roof is going to send half of it into the uh, to the west side and, and half to the east side. Yeah, there's two, there'll be two valleys created <clears throat> that saw a little bit, about a quarter of the new roof will shed into the sort of front, a quarter of it will go to the back, and then half of it will hit that eastern slope mm -hmm. where it will sort of drain into the existing, whether we do tie a gutter into the perimeter drain or if it just naturally slopes into that swale that then loops around the parking area. Which is not noted on these plan on the plans that Don prepared, mm -hmm. but there's definitely already sort of an existing stone line, and, and I think Meredith can attest to mm -hmm. seeing that there this morning. I mean, there's a stone wall along the walkway, mm -hmm. um, but you're saying that sort of beyond the staircase of the existing deck, there's a stone a sort of swale on the on yeah. the east side. Yeah, it goes around <clears throat> if you on on Don's most recent site plans it goes along really along the edge of where you're seeing the tree line there and then it kind of goes sort of, under the shed yeah it kind of goes under sort of under the shed so yeah sort yeah. of but around the existing existing paved parking area there's a swale that loops around and then ends up at a heavily um a lot of lilies area between in that little triangle between the driveway and ewing street and that's where there's some concern that you're going to have excess flows that then come out of there, hit the driveway, and then go out, or just right. cross the driveway, and then flow down to the neighbors. That's where the stormwater, some of the stormwater concerns come from. Okay. Does, I mean, the stormwater that, that goes into a lily area just sort of sits there and infiltrates? Or? Yeah, I think for the most part it probably does, you know. And then also, if there's anything that goes down the hillside towards the neighbors, that's also a very heavily vegetated, overgrown okay. hillside as well. <clears throat> Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions about the 30% slope? All right. I, I think that... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, so there were a couple of conditions that the Department of Public Works had <coughs> put in earlier that are noted on page 6 yeah, of the just staff report. Get, oh, okay. You were going to get... That's okay. where I was Sorry, going that, next. Okay, then you, you go ahead. You were... It sounded like you were moving on from 30% slopes. So. No, well, I was just as far as any sort of initial questions gotcha. as to 30% slopes. Good. Now, DPW is proposing, you know, essentially three conditions. Uh, one is that, you know... Uh, uh, you know, the fill quantity estimates need to be provided, which you've started to do. With, yeah. Um, and when disturbing earth, to flatten a knoll specifically, the amount of earth uh, to be altered. The fill area shall be compacted from the bottom and work towards the top. 
where slopes of greater than 30% will be created or altered, they shall be inspected and approved by a professional engineer. Um, if that was a condition, you, you know, could you comply with that? Yeah, I think that seems very reasonable, you know. Okay. Yeah. Basically, whatever we move, you know, I think Don's provided the volume. Right, and, and, then, and this is an erosion concern that we yeah. want. You know, if you're going to regrade to make sure that that grade is stable. And, yeah. You know, these are all just <laughs> techniques to make sure that the fill is stabilized. Yeah, that we're not going to just put something over in a pile here and it's going to slide down to the neighbor's driveway. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Chair, just to clarify that, do you read that first condition as pertaining to the knoll area being created, especially? <clears throat> is, that, is that part of what would be inspected? Yes. <clears throat> I mean, I would see it as any of the, uh, although I see it as broad enough to apply to any of the disturbed earth areas mm -hmm. where they're regrading, okay. that an engineer simply sign off that these are stable. Yeah, I think my, my understanding is it's more... Uh, in regards to the western area where the fill is going to be put, right? You know, I mean, we're not going to be. We yeah. just take a bunch away. We don't need to. Right. Yeah. But I mean, uh, if you're that. if you're digging out, I mean that. Anytime yeah, it always gets. Any, anytime you disturb earth, you're mm -hmm. you're changing, but not only where you put the earth, but where you've taken it from. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the reason I raise that is that the the null flattening just seems really it seems unrelated. It seems discretionary. It seems like not what this. Yeah, it's, it's what this totally bylaw change to was meant to accommodate yeah. in order for people to use their property more reasonably. Yeah. Yeah. And so it seems to me a little outside of scope. I, I think we have the law that we have, and I think it generally meets the requirements of alteration of steep slopes, but it just it raises my eyebrows as far as what, what this should even be pertaining to and why we tried to make it easier to develop on 30% slopes. I don't think it was for this purpose. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the slope map, it's almost, and then based on where Don has drawn the flattening, it's not even 30%. It's, I think it's less than, mm -hmm. but. Okay. Anyway, I'll just, I'll, I'll just make that point and leave it um, okay. like that. I think good. it's good best practice to, you know, have engineers look at yeah, just, the just sides. A, with regard to the null specifically, I think the CPW just wanted to make sure we knew how much earth was being moved. Yeah, I think. And yeah. then the second, you know, the, se the third and fourth yeah, the sentences in there are the actual conditions yeah. that... The fill area is being compacted yeah. from the bottom and work towards nope. the top, yep. and, and then where 30%. slopes are greater than 30%. Yeah. Okay. Given that cool. the bylaw allows it, that condition ensures that it will take place reasonably. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm I making a your, commentary. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Okay. So the second condition that DPW is proposing is that additional silt fence is needed along the western pro property line. Um, I presume that this is a... Uh, condition that would be for construction until yeah, everything's right. seated over. Yeah. I mean, uh, it looks like, I don't know if this is just the one I'm looking at that Don provided today, but there he does have silt fence. Right. Sort of more to the north of that hill, the fill area. <clears throat> but. And then the, the third condition is um, that based on site, uh, well, it's not really a condition. Um, it's just noting that additional details design are needed for grading the runoff to the roadway. This is what we've already covered. Yes, that with last the idea of yeah. and that would that would incorporate that condition that we're talking about, a future condition. Right. And I think to this, tie in. this one would actually be moot because we're no longer talking about getting the runway the runoff from the driveway into the street. We're talking about getting it yep. from the site into the pipe. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just I didn't have time to update the staff report. Of course. I didn't have time to read the memo again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I, I think that, you know, the remainder of 3007, um, you know, talks about not creating, you know, limiting the amount of disturbance, clearing existing natural vegetation and impervious surface in order to minimize potential for erosion, stormwater runoff flooding and or water quality impairment. What I'm hearing from you, Will, is that, first of all, the addition is being built into the hillside so yeah. that it's taking advantage of the natural slopes. You're not looking to alter them radically, similar to the last project you, mm -hmm. you proposed on North Street. Um, it's, it's, it's working with the topography as yeah. opposed to against it. You know, this flattening out and back to the extent that we're reviewing this as potential for a 30% 
slope is really about altering the, the topography within the, the yard in a manner that is not likely to alter the way the runoff occurs. Uh, the second question we have to consider is whether it's creating any slope steeper than 30 percent. None of this here appears to be creating any uh, slopes steeper than 30 percent. In fact, in some respects, leveling off steeper slopes. Yeah. Uh, the third is to preserve distinctive natural features, the general topography of the site, and the existing natural vegetation. And what you're testifying to is that essentially you're 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 talking about reseeding, but adding vegetation to the to the uh, site, yeah. um, making it you know, more water retentive, and um, not altering the existing swales and or vegetation that is yeah. um, uh, absorbing a lot of the water. Um, and then the fourth is maintain or reduce pre-existing rate and retain pattern of stormwater runoff leaving the property. Um, and that's, I think, where we get into the condition, the idea that if there's additional stormwater, what we're likely to see is down by the driveway where we're most concerned about uh, because the rest will be absorbed elsewhere on the property. And that's where we have the DPW condition, that's sort of a wait and see condition. Yeah, it's basically just the half of the addition roof that will then be directed into that area, so. Mm -hmm. Because it exi as it exists now, and I'll just make a sort of further point, is that where the eastern slope of the roof is going, that's where water is already falling mm -hmm. as it exists today. It's really the one, the western one, that's shifting it further along the driveway that may be adding a certain amount of water in this direction here. Yeah, that's going to add water to the west. This is going to add some degree of water. But I mean, way, but it's already covering it's already deck. Yeah, and, yeah, and the way the there. yeah the way the water the way the topography is it's already going in that yep. direction now. Yep. Is is simply my point. Yep. Um, okay. Any other questions, comments from the board? I think this is a fairly straightforward in that respect. Um, you know, there are further subcomponents to this, um, including producing a final grades compatible with surrounding natural terrain. This appears to be a case. Creating a harmonious transition between graded slopes and natural terrain. Again, we're not really altering the natural terrain, so this transition is as it's existing. Avoiding creating continuous unbroken slopes or linear slopes. Um, that also appears to be the case from the proposal and from the topography. Contour graded slopes by varying slope increment to produce a final grade that undulates both vertically and horizontally. Um, vary cut and fill banks and terraces to produce final grades of visual interest and allows for naturalistic landscaping. Again, there's no proposal to make this some sort of artificial sheer cliff or something. No. Um, consider use of retaining wall and terracing rather than cut and fill banks. I mean, apart from this sort of cut in the top that you're proposing, I mean, that's exactly you're fitting it into the existing bank. And this cut at the top is what it is, which is it, you yeah. either cut, cut to make it more level, to level out mm -hmm. a playing field or, or you don't. Yeah. I mean, I think there will be some very small detail stuff in the front entrance of the addition, but that's just sort of normal. You right. know, we're talking small cubic yardage, not massive amounts, you know, as far as to level continuing that stone wall, you know, take it apart, do the addition, put it back, make some steps. So, okay. Uh, vary the pad elevations on site with multiple structures to follow natural terrain. That's what this project proposes. Provide roads and drives that follow existing contours. No pr roads are being proposed. Use compact building forms and or multi-story buildings to minimize building footprint. That's what's happening here. You split or multi-level building forms that step up and down the slope again. Those are all being done. Um, so, I'll, just to save some time, a lot of this is the same comments we've talked about yeah. with regard to erosion control and stormwater. I've repeated some of DPW's comments as they're applicable. Right, and okay. this is the 4207 certificate. Of okay, so this is the certificate of compliance. This was a, an option, it's one way to affect making sure things are done, but it, that's that's the that's the big gun. Yeah. And you know, it's not it's not necessary. So, 
Well, let's, I think it's at this point, bring it back to the board. I mean, I don't think that there's any reason to, um, I don't see, I think this, that's the sole condition that we really have to consider. I mean, the rest of it, the additional silt fencing, um, the requirement that they build the, um, any, any fill be added so that it's compacted from the bottom so that creating stable um, additions uh, are all pretty pretty straightforward conditions. It's yes. really this this drainage condition that's a future condition. I mean, do we want to tie it to the biggest hammer we have, or is this something where we would feel comfortable simply making it a condition a condition subsequent where the um, you know applicant the D, if DPW required the applicant would have to comply with it or they'd be out of compliance with the permit but not necessarily tying it to a certificate of occupancy such that if they didn't comply they'd not be allowed to occupy the space I, th I think your point is well taken I, th this is precedent setting what we're what we're uh, the wording that we're going to use for the uh, tonight so I I, I, I do believe that the certificate of occupancy is overkill. Um, so if we could find a way to step it down a little bit, I, I would be much more comfortable with that. Small hammer. Yeah. Small hammer. Yeah. Is there a smaller hammer? And, and hammer, I don't like that word because we're we're talking about a hook. We're not talking about being mean. We're asking for something right, to be course. done and ensuring that it does. That doesn't sure. need to be a hammer. Yeah. Yeah. So is, is there a medium? We, we, we will accept other suggestions from the toolbox. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I just look at the topography on site. It just seems like uh, on site infiltration plan, uh, you know, could be designed and be suitable. Uh, I think if this were a much more complicated site, I'd be concerned about uh, mm -hmm. requiring it to be sent to the street. But I'm not really seeing a huge amount of disturbance or, uh, you know, there's plenty of space to Put yeah, outside, yeah, and there, there's not a lot of impervious surface either. I mean, this is pretty much a grass, grassy lawn that's likely to absorb a lot of this. Uh, I I agree. I mean, I think that's it's a low, it's a low stakes um, issue as opposed to a more complicated site. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it is not. If it goes wrong, it would be as serious, sure, as as anything because. It's right there on the public street. Um, well, one way to frame this, and let me maybe suggest a way to do this, would simply to make this a condition that prior to uh, expiration. expiration of the permit, um, the applicant shall seek sign off from DPW um, of this drainage. And if the applicant fails to do so, then it becomes a violation of the permit. And the city can seek through any, you know, notice of violation process to enforce this condition. Um, such that it wouldn't tie it to a certificate of occupancy, but at some point before you're done, You've got to, so two years or three years, if you get the extension, to get DPW to sign off on this. Um, yeah, basically, which would mean them coming out during a rate event being like, seems to be working. We're satisfied with it, or, you know, however they choose to view it, um, whether, yeah, I mean, I think most likely is in person. And then, I, I you know, while I think there's a good, there's a benefit of making it a little bit, well, let me take a step back. There are pluses and minuses. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to make this, because of the representations of both the city and the applicant uh, through, through Meredith, the staff for the city, but also through the applicant, is that this is, this is really a problem. People seem to be on the same page about um, and there may be more than one solution. There may be a very simple, elegant solution, such as DPW is suggesting, but there may be a more, a, another simple solution, such as a rain garden mm -hmm. that wouldn't even require tying into the city system. Mm -hmm. And if that was the case, then, you know, I think the applicant should be free to pursue either of those yes. 
to the satisfaction of the Depart yeah. Department of Public Works because mm -hmm. we are making the Department of Public Works the final arbiter of this so that, you know, if if they are not satisfied, then the condition's not satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, and you are taking that risk. Whereas if it was something you were to do to tie it into the street, you know, to make it very, you know, limit more, much more limited would give you a greater degree of certainty, but it might cut off more creative solutions yeah. if, or lesser solutions if, in fact, those were more reasonable. Yeah. So, um, I just want to ask a question. Um, Kevin raised a good point earlier about data points. Is it going to be a wet spring? Is it going to be a dry spring? Yeah. Who's to say that the given rain event that DPW comes out for is the best rain event to examine this exactly. under? It's, Gosh, it's I mean, it's, it's so hard to say. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking of situations where you know one or two, one house, one or two houses have gone in, and then three years later, a neighbor's pretty certain that this new runoff, talking about my part of the neighborhood, um, is because of thus and such. A, is that valid data or is it anic data that we can't really act on? Mm -hmm. And B, would there be redress in a situation like that? Like if it's a particularly bad yeah. year. I, I'm thinking out loud a little bit. I don't know that these questions have answers, but I'm just trying to make sure that when, when DPW comes out and looks at it, can they get the best possible look? So should they, should they come out twice? Yeah. Um, to see how it behaves, like it might behave differently on a dry day than on a wet yeah, day. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think that's what they were saying. It was like coming out in the springtime, like April, May, when the ground is saturated. Assuming sat previous saturation. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's not coming out during a thunderstorm in August. Sure. So. Yeah. Okay. Did you? All right. Well, so, I was just going to say that. I mean, that's uh, my understanding is that. The goal of DPW is to come, go out and do visits in April or May, and they would be perfectly happy having a condition say that, you know, their judgment based upon, you know, site visits in April or May, and you can limit that to their um, sure. yeah, I visit, I, visits. I, I think one visit might not be enough. Right. I think well, yeah, and I think be, also might be sensible, but I don't know what that number is. I don't well, want to but be it's arbitrary. also to their to their satisfaction too. Yeah. yeah. You know, you I, could I, put a, a a floor on it. I'm thinking, as, as Meredith is, is stating, that that that's a discretion, I think, of D, DPW. I mean, they're, they're looking at properties all over town. And no right. more visits as they deem appropriate. As I they think. deem appropriate. Right. Okay. Okay. With that, I mean, it sounds like we've, we've largely coalesced around uh, a potential condition that is not going to be tied to a certificate of compliance, but would instead be tied to the life of the, the permit, um, yes. would put DPW in the position of making the discretionary call of whether or not the existing condition satisfied their concern uh, of runoff. And, and, you know, one sort of further assurance I think that lies under this is we're really talking about the impact to the public street as opposed to neighboring properties where, you know, the law of, of water um, is that if there's alterations such that the par property below is accepting more water than it previously did, they have a private right of action against any landowner. That's, that's different than this concern so that you know, we can really be focused on this concern without looking at the larger picture. Of, yeah. Um, so the condition that DPW make the, the, and that the language be loose enough to give the applicant the flexibility to um, either apply the proposed DPW uh, uh, solution if, the, if required or another solution that was met the satisfaction of DPW. Okay. I think that's all we can tear away at with this application. I'll, okay. I'll entertain uh, a motion. Don't all jump at once. <laughs> well, what I'm looking for, and perhaps Meredith, you could, uh, you could uh, bring all of these parts together, and then uh, we can uh, wordsmith that into a motion. Okay. Not, 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 not to put you on yep. the spot. Well, but if on the last page of the staff report, I have most of it. 
Um, yes, you do. Uh, so it's the second bullet motion. Um, oh, I'll take a crack at it. Yep, and just make sure you get sub mm -hmm. sub Roman numeral two, three, and then the additional silt fencing, say as requested by DPW. Okay. In addition to what we just talked about. Okay, I will, I will make an attempt at a motion to approve approve motion to approve construction on steep slopes at nine Ewing Street as proposed with the following conditions. One condition is that fill area shall be compacted from the bottom and worked toward the top. Slopes of 30% or greater in fill area shall be inspected and approved by a professional engineer prior to the administrator, administrative office issuing a final, nope. Nope, yes. Um, shall be inspected and approved by a professional okay. engineer. Yep. Period. Um, a silt fence shall be installed on the western property western side of the property and anywhere else deemed appropriate as recommended by the Department of Public Works. And last but not least, the condition that DPW inspect the storm water runoff after completion to assure that it is being handled properly, prop handled to DPW's satisfaction, whether that is through on-site infiltration, um, or other methods elected by the applicant. The um, DPW will need to sign off on the handling of stormwater and show that it's to its satisfaction um, in order for the prior applicant to, to Prior be, to expiration. Prior to expiration of the zoning permit in order for the applicant to be in compliance. Make that more concise if you like. <laughs> okay. Do you understand the conditions, Will? Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> I can't repeat it. <laughs> yeah, we, have we have a motion by Meredith. And no. I'm no. sorry. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm looking at Meredith. We have a motion by Kate. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Kevin. It was a group effort. Um, and it was, and I appreciate that. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All right. You have. Approval will be issuing a written decision right. that will encapsulate these conditions so thoughtfully. We're excited to hear for you tonight. Good. Good project. Yeah. Thank you all. Okay, Mr. Howard, come on up. Ouch. So, if you'll just state your name for the record. Michael Howard, uh, I'm at 781 North Street. Hey, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under a pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Okay. Uh, why don't we do this the same way, Meredith, if you want to give us a little background as well as uh, sort of an overview of the project? Okay. So, again, we have a single-family home looking to put in a two-story addition. Um, that two-story addition has some impact on 30% or greater slopes, whether it's actually where the addition is or just the area that's going to need to be mm -hmm. you know, worked on to put that in. Um, so that is the 30% the slope issue is the only reason this is here before you. Um, you know, there there is... You know, be aware that the site plan has some notes that pertain to changes to the driveway parking area. That is actually not part of this proposal right now. Um, okay. Those were in here on that engineering document for other discussion um, with the engineer, and um, but that's not part of what we're looking at. Right. Um, because and it's not part of this it's not, particular it's, permit? Yeah, it's, right, it's, well, it's just not part of what the, the current I mean, project. I, I, had, I had Dawn um, do that design so that I had it in case I wanted to do that work a few okay. years from now. It's not, yeah, it's not and part I, of Maybe it was a little confusing. I probably oughtn't to have done it, it's, <laughs> but that was the intent. No, that's, it's, that's, people, that's, people do that all the time, and then we get here like, oh, no, <laughs> ignore that. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, what you've got highlighted in here, there's, there's, very little here that to me seemed like it was a question mark or a determination that you mm -hmm. necessarily needed to make because steep slopes is before you like I do with all of these 
I note and read all of the different steep slopes criteria. I didn't see anything that was a problem. Um, you know, the Department of Public Works had no concerns with the steep slopes issues with any of the engineered designs, but you still need to make that final determination. Right. Um, the only concerns that Department of Public Works had, and those were really the only reasons I flagged them, is potentially some drainage issues. Um, and so really, instead of looking at this section 3009 in the staff report, you should go to the email from Zach Blodgett that I handed out to you at the beginning of this meeting, um, because as with 9 Ewing Street, um, Don Marsh and Zach Blodgett went and visited 781 North Street this morning. Mm -hmm. I believe we met with you, correct, Michael? Um, and had some discussion and, and looked at the culvert that was at one point a concern of DPWs. And at this point, given that there are no changes to the driveway, so there's not going to be any widening, they really didn't feel that upgrading that culvert was a major issue at this point anymore. Um, what they would like to see is some redirection of surface flows so that they enter the ditch further away from the driveway and the culvert. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure, Michael, I know at one point they were talking about putting in um, rip -rap. Was it rip wrap. Yeah. And was that something that you're still thinking about doing? Or no, that no. that's not something to do as long as you get those flows entering the ditch further Correct. away from the drive. Correct. Yeah, so right. that's my understanding. Ma'am. Um, and so that would be the condition now instead of um, replacing the, the, the items that I had drafted at the end of the staff report. Right. Which um, were yeah, those were all yeah. about upgrading the culvert and the riprap. So instead of those, after the site visit, Department of Public for, Works for information, would be happy with there's um, the upgrading the culvert is a code issue. There's nothing wrong with the culvert. He took a look. It's not failing. It's in fine shape. Mm -hmm. There's nothing okay. wrong with it. So it's just not the current standard, but Correct. it's in good Correct. condition. Yep. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Right. But it's the it's the uh, surface flow. Mm -hmm. So. So what happens is, if I may, the the, the currently the, the water sort of comes down my driveway and out on the street. Mm -hmm. What they're saying is, if you look on the civil plan, the driveway sort of runs roughly north south. Mm -hmm. And they're saying if uh, if you could just slope it a little bit more to the west. So that it gets down in the ditch and doesn't run down that whole driveway one and then to the street, and that's no problem. I'll be I'll be regrading that driveway uh, as a part of this project anyway. Okay. And by regrading, I mean slightly regrading, not yeah. Not, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean I'll have someone out there that can do that work. But no problem. The idea of redirecting the surface load to enter mm -hmm. the ditch approximately 20 feet north of the driveway culvert inlet would. Zero problem. I'm going to do that anyway. Okay. <laughs> it, it makes more sense for me. My driveway washes out as it stands, so this whole alleviate that problem and address his concerns no problem okay. what about the uh removal of trees well so I, I we had planned on doing that in some fashion anyway the mm -hmm. the only thing i would sort of push back a little bit on that is that it, it has to do that the, he wanted that um that's part of that b71 standard the mm -hmm. the driveway entry, and that has to do with sight lines in that i'm not doing that driveway work anyway i'm not changing it mm -hmm. i'm sure the b71 applies Having said that, I plan on doing that work anyway, so I don't see that being a problem. We had planned on, I don't know if you've been up there, the place is kind of overgrown, so we really had planned on cutting back some trees there and opening up that, and that would help with sight lines, uh, incidentally. Okay. Well, I mean, I take your point as a fair one, which is, you know, there's a difference between, yes, I'm going to do this work versus, yes, I'm going to do this work, and it's a condition that I have mm -hmm. to do this work. Right, correct. Um, and that's a, you know, the B-71 standard is is pretty much the universal standard for all driveways. Obviously, if you're not changing a driveway and it's an existing one, but... So another part of that, if you read further in that email, the, the, the and I knew this as soon as I got the B-71, is uh, that there's no chance in the world I could ever make that B-71 standard. Right. Yeah. Right. The topography and the nature of the road, the, it will never work. So it, no matter what happens, I can't. Right. Well, and, and the B seventy one is kind of an idealized standard, sure. which is there's, yeah. you know, I don't know what percentage driveways in Actually, Vermont, right. but right. far short of a hundred. Right. But having said that, uh, having met, I, that's that's the, sort of sounds negative. But having met with Zach, everything he said uh, was reasonable, and I plan on doing so. Right. Uh, I mean, that, that's what I understand to be the two conditions that he's looking for is the regrading of the driveway to mm -hmm. for surface water, and then. Yep. 
removing these trees? I mean, we're we talking about like big trees or just a bunch of okay, yeah. mm -hmm. giant pine, so, sixty foot pine. They're, they're okay. They're mad. So it's not going to be nothing for me to do. So I'm, I'm a little leery to agree out of hand to to because he doesn't really define the extent of it. Again, I'm happy to work with him, and I plan on doing that work anyway. Even some of those big pines, I just yeah. if it if it needs to be defined well, and it, it, as a condition of permit issuance, I'd, I'd rather. Boy, I sure would like to move on with this project, and uh, and right. uh, to be hung up on that would be would be tough. I, I'm not sure it's important for that to be a condition. Yeah, I, I think yeah. just state in here, you know, state as a finding that the applicant has agreed yeah. to work yeah. with DPW yeah. to Absolutely. clear, you know, clear some foliage, yeah, and and mm -hmm. the other but thing is that you know hey. you're 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 you know this is a single family home. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can do what you do with you know within the life of the permit, but. You can cut down a tree on your property right. whenever you want. And we need to be able to see better. We've, we've had the part where we stick our nose out and a car comes whizzing by. So yeah, yeah. it helps us too. So I'm 1,000% on board. Yeah. So, so just I, I think I want to clarify and make sure I understand too what, what Meredith just said, which is we, we note it as a finding. Mm -hmm. That means we understand it and we discussed it. Um, we don't know it as a condition, which gotcha. would, would make it a requirement, which gotcha. I think you understand, yeah. but I wanted to Absolutely. make sure. Yeah. No, I appreciate yeah. it. Yep. Okay. okay. Perfect. If, so, if others agree. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly amenable to that. Yeah. Well, it's not that we're known to it, but let's cut to the chase. Let's talk about this uh, garage addition. So you have the existing house. Yep. You're proposing a garage addition mm -hmm. towards the front of the house. Yep. Uh, the side of the house, actually. But yes, the right. page bottom. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, I mean, I'm looking at... Uh, like drawing a three yep. and this is to be built into the side of the and i'm looking at a four that looks like it has them yeah so basically that the line you see on two a four mm -hmm. that's the existing slope i'm just i'm basically digging a hole plunking something in and replacing the grades as they are there's a very i mean maybe within six inches or six, but essentially right. and you can see that on the contour plan the dotted lines versus like there's really not that much of a change. We're gonna we're gonna redo the driveway. The driveway's all fun. It kind of goes up and it flattens up and it goes up. We're gonna try to smooth that out a bit. Mm -hmm. But essentially, we're just plunking a building into the side of the hill. It's not it's not. Uh, we don't intend to change any any grading or topography. There we go. <laughs> it's, it's also very. Funny picture of your 21.2 acres in your hockey. I know, right? I was surprised. I <laughs> don't, don't put that one in. I don't know. You did earn his fee, I guess. <laughs> okay. So, essentially, you're, you're putting in a, a stepped concrete foundation garage anyway. into the hillside. It's attached to the existing house. Mm -hmm. You're not looking to re regrade the, um, re the slope where it sits. Other than you know some minor adjustments into correct, it, so. correct. Yeah. So that there's a drive that comes up behind the house that that's already there. We want to keep that as a sort of a rear entrance to the house. So that mm -hmm. again, we, we just and it just so it it works out too with where the floors want to be. Uh, just to not change anything, it just doesn't make sense. So everything should essentially be the same. Okay. Uh, and I'll note that Don issued a letter basically mm -hmm. saying that there would be no significant alterations impact. to the uh, site will be developed without causing adverse impacts on public health safety of the environment. Mm -hmm. um, and really the way the roof looks like it's going to shed, it will continue to let water flow down the same manner that it has before. It's just correct. I mean, we're not redirect. You're not redirecting water to a different area. No. Um, you can see the downspouts on a three. Well, actually, better spell a three and a four. Right. The back. There's no. There's no gutter in the back, so that just goes to the ground, and it should. You know, it's a pretty long run before you get to the ditch, so that shouldn't cause too much of a problem. The call it the east gutter. You can sort of see it on a three. Mm -hmm. That takes, you know, a little bit more than half of the roof on the south side. And what's not shown in Don's drawing is in front of the house, um, say about 10 feet off of the house, there's a, a planter that's about 10 feet wide and 20 feet long, and it's burned up high. So any of that water just is going to get sucked up by that planter. 
Um, and then on the new edition, I, you know, depending on cost, we might actually tie the gutter and have that go all the way across. But I'm sure I'm currently going from sort of the existing down to the other side. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to see it on a, yeah, two on a four. It sort of comes down. I'm going to have it drop into a, a rocky catchment. I'm going to, I'm going to put some geotextile and put a, if you can see there, down mm -hmm. to drain to rocky area and planter. Can you I'm slide gonna, the microphone oh, towards you? Oh, I'm sorry, you? yeah. It's you're pointing yeah, your face I'm, that way. Yeah. <laughs> you can move the whole base to the other right. side if you want. Yeah. So that'll catch that water and allow it some time to percolate down before it flows onto the driveway. Okay. Well, and I'll note the DPW found at their site visit that they did not have any concerns as to Correct. runoff. Correct. Yeah. And, I mean, you have a, it looks like you have a footing drain in here to the road ditch, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Off the corner. But I don't intend to tie, it's not at this point, it's not my intention to tie the uh, roof drain to the footing drain and have that go into the ditch. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's just for your perimeter drain. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, going through the, um, any questions? The rest of the board. So, marching through the, uh, conditions uh, or the issues that we have to address when we talk about steep slopes uh, the first one being limiting the amount of disturbance clearing of existing natural vegetation and impervious surface in order to minimize potential for erosion storm water runoff flooding and water quality impairment which is a relatively modest garage addition to the house it's in an existing area um, it does not look like they're adding a great deal of impervious surface and relatively small compared to their larger uh, acreage mm -hmm. um, not creating a slopes deeper than 30 percent no they're not creating any slopes in this um, preserve distinctive natural features and general topography of the site and existing natural vegetation per the applicant's testimony that's to be contained to be continued um, this the slope and angle and the vegetation around this area will be preserved uh, maintain or reduce the pre-existing rate and retain the pattern of stormwater runoff leaving the property. DPW has signed off and has indicated that they're comfortable with the stormwater flows. The testimony of the applicant is also that the stormwater, I mean that the roof is going to basically shed into the existing property in a similar manner to how the rainfall falls now using gutters, um, planters, and other mm -hmm. um, natural features to retain stormwater. Uh, produce a final grade that is compatible with surrounding natural terrain that's already been covered uh, create a harmonious transition between graded slopes and natural terrain again built into the hillside here uh, avoid creating continuous unbroken slopes or linear slopes does not appear to be any issue here contour graded slopes by varying the slope increment to produce a final grade that undulates both vertically and horizontally uh, the drawings indicate this. Very cut and fill banks and terraces to produce a final grade that's visual interest and allows for naturalistic landscaping. Again, the application is consistent with these um, goals. Consider use of retaining walls and terracing rather than cut and fill banks. This is not really an issue here that the uh, banks are going to be preserved at their natural slope. Uh, vary the pad elevations on the site with multiple structures follow the natural terrain. This is again a steps, step concrete foundation. It's going to have multiple levels consistent with the house. Uh, provide roads and drives that follow existing contours. There's no new proposed road and drive. The road is actually going to be recontoured to be more consistent with the hillside. Correct. Um, use compact building forms and or multi-story buildings to minimize building footprint. That's already discussed. Um, use split or multi-level building forms that step up or down slope again this is the consistent with that so given those findings um, it would appear that the applicant has generally unless the any further questions from the board has met the steep slope requirements. These are engineered plans. These are consistent with the um, goals and elements of consideration for steep slope. Um, it's not unlike other applications that we've had in which it maximizes the uh, compatibility with the existing slope. Any further questions? 
a motions from the board. So I'll make the motion. Okay. But, um, on the driveway, you're not going to use the riprap option. That was outlined, and when we've discussed that, and everything is good. Mm -hmm. um, the driveway culvert, do we want to make that a, a condition? No, no. I think Public Works backed off of that. Okay. And it's just a re. I think I think the idea is that if and when I do revise my driveway to be slanted or to do something at that point, I would uh, engage with DPW to, to resolve that and okay. figure out what we're going to do. That was, that was definitely discussed, and I yeah. know that's coming when I go to apply for the permit to do that work. Yeah, and that would be separate. That would just be a DPW construction and access permit when he gets to that point. So yeah. that, I think, is the only condition we have left. Okay. Then, then the motion will be uh, to approve the request for uh, construction of two-story addition impacting slopes of greater than or equal to 30 percent at uh, the project location 781 North Street as presented by the applicant and, uh, and materials dated uh, August 9th, 2019 and the, the one condition to be is to be regrade to redirect surface flow to enter the ditch approximately 20 feet uh, north of the driveway culvert. Per DPW. Per DPW, that's what that was. Okay, that's the Sorry, motion. That was my shorthand for myself. You did. You did right. <laughs> okay. Motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Rob. Any further discussion? And you're comfortable with this condition about Absolutely, the Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I was going to do it anyway. It helps me. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All right. There is a preliminary approval. We'll issue a written decision um, that will encompass these findings uh, shortly. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Michael. I'm glad to, I'm glad to get you here. Yeah. <laughs> addition. I know it's been a bit of a road for you. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Everybody. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. You're welcome. Any other business? Any concerns, issues? Um, Meredith, have we, is there any other update as to uh, additional member or applicants? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Sorry. Is, That's is, okay. I, I, it's, it remains beat the bushes. Anybody out there who wants to apply, who lives in Montpelier, please go on the website or just contact city manager's office and get an application in. Uh, I'll make a plug. I'll say that I started out as an alternate because I thought that would be a good way to learn and, and see if I liked it. And there are alternate positions open. So if people want to have kind of a... Just test the water. Test the water. Test the water. Get the toe good, in. Good, good idea. Right, Michael? That's yeah. really true. That's really true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's a really good way to learn. I did that for two years before yeah. I was a permanent member, yeah. and that was just fine. So really, this is something that can be learned, and this board can help you learn it. So right. please get involved. It's a great way to, to, uh, to get to know your, your hometown. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so with no other business, uh, I will make a note that our next meeting is September 16th at 7 p.m. That is a Monday. Um, and I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are adjourned. See everyone on the 16th.